Boxing is back with the IBO World Light Heavyweight Championship. Can Suarez take the belt? Or will one of Britain's brightest prospects, Lyndon Arthur, seize victory? Big Fight Live, Arthur versus Suarez. Friday at 10 on Channel 5. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. And I've got to say, I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Nathaniel Collins himself, the Commonwealth and the new British featherweight champion. How's that sound, Nathaniel? <laughs> it's good, good, good feeling, good feeling. I bet it is. Well, obviously, I said to you there, but before I pushed record, that I was down in Liverpool um, when you won that fight a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was down at the Pacheco Jack Cullen fight. Uh, watched your fight, it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm happy for you. But uh, just talk to me about the fight itself with James Beach, uh, James Beach there. I mean, the body shot, it looked like it just was one of the most perfect. You just sunk it right up the middle. Just talk to me about the fight itself. Yeah, mate, it was good. Um, good fight, good um, good body shot. Like, some, mm. a shot, obviously, we, we've worked on for, like, probably my whole career. Like, Joe always says to me, you know, the wee bowl shot's a perfect shot for a southpaw. And um, I think, I don't know if you see, I put up a clip the other day, I don't know if you've seen, but most of the people I've, I've been putting away have been hit with that shot. So, um, yeah, I mean, everything kind of went to plan. Um, I came out the ring and I said I wasn't happy with my performance and I, I thought like I was only like 50, 60% how good I, I could be or how good I usually am. Like, um, just due to circumstances, time getting in the ring, like loads of different things that I learned from that time. Um, like getting up early on fight day mm -hmm. and like not being in the ring till, you know, nearly 20 to midnight or whatever time we got in the ring and stuff like loads of new things because it just how, how the day panned out. So it was a weird one, but like, I wasn't that happy with my performance. I thought I could have been much, much better, but the feedback afterwards was amazing. Like people thought it was a world-class performance. People thought I'd done this and I'd done that. So, um, if that's how highly people are rating me based on that performance, wait till they see what I can actually do, you know? So, well, that, that's a scary thing then, Nathaniel, isn't it? Because if that's only 60% of yourself, you're still only 26 years old. I don't think you've even hit your prime yet, if that's safe to say. I think, I think there's more to come in terms of strength and everything like that. A lot of fighters don't hit their prime till their late, late 20s, maybe 30s. Um, so that's a scary thing. If there's still more to come, especially in this featherweight division, which I've said on numerous occasions is my favourite division. So, um, that being said, what is next for you then? As you've won that British title. Obviously, a lot of fighters want to defend it three times and win it outright. But when you look at the division right now, it's stacked with talent. Is that a case of you wanting to win that title outright? Um, mate, I, we, we've done a lot of interviews before when I said I wasn't even bothered about the British title. It was just how quick can we get to world level? And it's still about that, like... Most of the guys that are in this division have won the British title. Like, all the guys ahead of me on box wreck have all won it. Like, they're not looking to come back and start trying to re-go for the British and stuff. And I'm not looking behind me trying to let people come up. So, because it's been a hard come up for me. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm not bothered. I, I'd rather just go and fight for the European. Like, British Commonwealth European. Um, mm -hmm. And in and, and that wee space of time or... Uh, whatever's next, like there's so many, so many opportunities. Um, but like for me, the now it's all about getting signed and actually raising my my profile and trying to get on one of the bigger platforms that that everybody seems to be getting on the now. Well, that's the thing. You are the Commonwealth and British title uh, champion. You hold two titles. You're in a division which, again, I said it's my favorite division, and I'll tell you why it's my favorite division. It's full of badass killers, man. It's full of Great fighters up and down the, the board. You've got Maurizio Lara. You've got Al uh, Luis Alberto Lopez out of Mexico. You've got, especially here in the UK, you've got uh, Josh Warrington. You've got bloody Lee Wood. Then you've got McConlin over in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? You've got Rob Z. Ramirez, who's fighting for the WBO against Isaac Dogbo. Um, you've got Jazza Dickens, who's the IBO world champion. You've got Mark McZio. You've got yourself. You've got Kiko Martinez, who's the European champion, which you just mentioned there, I believe it or not. I believe Kiko Martinez is the European champion. So, I mean, 
that is just the names on top of my head right there. I can go on box rec right now and have been nosy it, and then I'll probably find out who's ahead of you in the British champion in the British rankings. But right now, that's absolutely crazy. And I worked it out, Nathaniel, that there's been three, no, there's been four WBC world champions in the last 18 months to two years. There's been four IBF world champions in the last 18 months to two years. There's been three WBA world champions in the last 18 months to three years. You're just passing these both titles around each other. <laughs> you're fighting each other. That's why it's my favourite division. How excited, uh, look, I'm excited. How excited <laughs> would you be in the division? Man, it's wild. It's so wild. Like the other day, might have been the week before I fought the, that Magasayo and Figuera fight was on and I was looking at like, I was looking at thinking I, I box ahead of both these guys. Like, um, and it's a hard one for me. It's weird. It's a hard one for me to swallow the now because I'm looking at people who are going to try and come up and want a shot at the British. And I'm like, what have you done? Why am I giving you a shot at the British? But these guys ahead of me, world champions or European champions are looking at me. I'm just a wee guy, no followers. Like I've got these titles. Mm -hmm. I'm dangerous. I've not got a promoter backing me. So why are they fight? Why do they want to fight me? Why would they defend a world title against me? Why would they defend the European against me? A guy with not a lot of profile, you know? So um, it's a tough one to swallow. That's that's why I'm like, I need to just build my profile up, build my profile up because that's how you get recognised. Nobody wants to fight the unknown guy or lose to the unknown guy. Mm. And then you're back to square one because that's a guy you should have bet. But they don't, like, the boxing fans might know I'm a hard fight for so-and-so or so-and-so, but your general public don't, and then these big guys who are household names are fighting this guy that nobody knows and getting beaten. It's just too much risk to reward ratio. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, that's the that's the thing. I think when you look at boxing right now, you everyone everyone says a lot of people say that it's a business first and then it's a sport. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The business side of things takes over the sport side of things, and I think like when you say profile. You can see it yourself on social media. It's that. It's the gift of the gab. It's the talking that gets some, mo most fights made. If you can talk smack or do whatever you can on Twitter, send out that tweet, that's how fights get made. So with that respect, obviously, I'll do what I can with IFL to get your profile, your name out there. But yeah. um, I'm, like I said, looking at the British rankings, Jordan Gill's moving up. I know that for a fact. Yeah. He's moving up. Yeah. Super featherweight. You've got Nick Ball, Jazza, Lee, Josh, and Isaac Dogbo ahead of you. That's it. <laughs> and they're that 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 they are all world champions are gonna be world champions. Yeah. So you're almost there. Yeah, man. I'm just like I'm clawing at people's heels. I seen the other day, like somebody tweeted me and they were like, Oh, good first defense, Louis Lynn. Louis Lynn just retired. I seen the other day on his Instagram, like his shoulders done and he's mm. away doing his own thing. Um Mark McCune was maybe meant to be my first defence. He's retired. Like Isaac Lowe's probably looking at a wee one on the Fury card to get back. Um, so everybody's like, everybody about me is tied up. And I'm just like, I, I don't care. Just give me somebody up there then. Get it. Like, I'll take, you know, um, Kiko. I find... let, me just, let me just say it. Kiko. Kiko Martinez. You ready for yeah. Kiko right now? Yeah, I'm ready. Kiko um, vacated the European, so what did he? Um, two, uh, as far as I'm aware, two Italian guys are meant to be fighting for it in April, and then I'm ready to go. You know, if any of the Italian guys pull out, I'll go for. I, I'll be happy to slot in. If you know they fight for it and somebody wins, I'll happily be a first defence. I'll go to Italy. I don't care. I mean, I'll fight anybody. I'll fight them in the home. I'll fight them in the oh, pardon me. I'll fight them in the backyard. But um, you know, I'm just happy. I'm happy. You know, there's a very few percentage of people in the game that can say they've won a British and Commonwealth. There's very few people that can say they've done it in as quick a fight as me. Um, I was saying the other day, like I think I'm every title fight I've been in, I've stopped the guy minus one. So. Mm. Ah, I'm just making a name for myself and I've got loads to be blessed for so um, the good stuff will come the yeah, that's, will it, come. that's it but the reason I mentioned Kiko right because Kiko is at, probably at that age now where he, he's he's sort of he's still a big name because he obviously coming off that Jordan Gill win um, he's he obviously lost against Josh Wongton but he beat Gig, Gig Galahad he's, he lost against Self Abad so he's, he's known in the UK shows he's known over here Um and you saying that you're clawing at the heels of the guys above you. Kiko is at that sort of, 
without being disrespectful, he's at that age now with somebody as young as you and as game as you and as talented as you. You beat Kiko, then people start chattering. Then people start thinking, oh, that's that boy from Glasgow. He just beat Kiko Martinez, who beat Jordan Gill in his last fight, who uh, fought for the world title against Josh Wongton, beat Kid Gallad for the world title. So the reason I mentioned Kiko is because of that. Is it somebody like Kiko in that bracket that you're wanting next? For sure, mate. Like, Kiko, you look at Kiko, he's... I mean, don't get it. Like, Twisted, obviously, he's still a dangerous guy. He's still a scary guy. So, um, but he's a gatekeeper to that, like, beyond the beyond the domestic mm. level. If, if you can beat this guy, then you're going up. But then it just goes back to the, the age-old question. Like, Sam can't put on that fight. Sam can't pay that guy enough money. Like, Kiko's not going to come to Glasgow and fight in the Fissel Hotel, you know what I mean? So... It leads me back to I need to be with like a match room, I need to be with a box, I need to be with a Queensbury, or you know, somebody needs to put that fight on or offer that fight up. I don't know who he's with, he might be with match room still. Um, and as a fight, 100%, I'd love or anybody like that is, is what I'd love. So it's just getting up onto that platform and and doing what I do on the regular, but on, on the big stage, what you need to do, uh. Nathaniel, right, is get some highlights made up of all your fights and tag Eddie, tag Frank, and tag Ben Schwartz. Mate, I, <laughs> I've already done all this. I don't know what I don't know what else I can do. Someday we'll see it someday. Yeah. Um it's the same there. Like I put up highlights in my stoppages, I put up highlights of this and that. So um and I do I've tagged them all and everything, and I thought the hype of that we British um would get the ball moving. So and maybe something is happening in the in the background. I mean, I have been off and away for a week, like in Edinburgh and chilling with my family and kind of on radio silence. So maybe stuff's happening, but we'll see here. Listen, well, let, let's look at the guys in the UK right now. I mean, Jazza Dickens, the IBO world champion. He's probably, yeah. he, he's looking for a fight. I don't know. He, he said he's going to have news soon, but I mean, you look at these domestic guys in Lee Wood and, and, and uh, Josh Warrington, Isaac Dogbo and, and uh, yourself and then Jazza. I mean, it's a fantastic division just here in the UK alone. So, how far are you? How many fights away are you from them guys? None, mate. I, I would fight any of them now, and that's not me being like any type of way. I genuinely believe ability wise, I'm on that level. Last two camps is getting a nutritionist, getting strength and conditioning coaches, like treating it like a serious professional. I'm not a stone throw away for that. And it's just like um it was Paige sent me the other day, like you look at Lee Wood, if he had his um golden contract fights and then he didn't know where he was going. He fought Reese Mould and then next minute he's getting the call for, you know, Kanzu. So it's like and it can happen. So they people were in the position I'm in, um, they were probably thinking to themselves, like, what's going on? And then like at the drop of the hat, something just happened. So it's just mm. stay ready. Like I was back in the gym the Sunday or the Monday after the fight. Um Obviously not going to feel pelt, but I'd done only seven rounds and I didn't feel like I'd done anything. It felt like a six-round spar, you know what I mean? That's no disrespect to James Beach. I was just in good condition and had prepared properly and I was ready to go again, so... What is next for you in terms of fight? Obviously, Sam's going to try and get you out of the margin, so when can we look yeah, to man, get back out no matter what? I think June, uh, well, in the middle of June, hopefully... Um, I just want to be active this year so if nothing else big comes about I'll just keep plowing away and um, hopefully middle of June and whether it's a defence or just getting out and whatever like I'm not bothered but uh, I took well, whatever I had off 10 months last year to, to hear for the Jacob Robinson fight was far far too long and it was making me like feel I hate the sport I hate this I hate that and I was like just one of the ones that eats you up a wee bit, so you're yeah. like, but then I was out and now I'm happy and it's a good release of energy. So, um, hopefully, June Spring, springs and roundabouts for boxing, isn't it? The highs and lows <laughs> of the court is absolutely it, there's extreme highs and extreme lows, so it's one of them ones. But Nathaniel, what I will say though, um, we do know that big promoters watch IFL TV now. If you if they were watching this interview, would like right now, what would you like to say to the Eddie Hearns, the Frank Warrens, and the Ben Shaloms? Just that my track record's proven, um, 12-0, six knockouts, 
most of my knockouts came in title fights. Commonwealth and British champion. As soon as I started and turned pro, I came out. I probably one of my first interviews was with you, and I said, like, I don't want to fight journeyman. Um, five fights in, I fought, you know, Scotland area level title, Celtic title. So I was Celtic, Commonwealth a couple of fights later. Now I'm British, so I've got a proven track record. I'm an easy sell. I'll fight anyone. Um, and it's I'm easy to deal with, so just call me up, man. Call me up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Nathaniel, man, I hope you do get that that, that crack, man, because you deserve it, mate. You're a, you're a, you're a nice man. You, you're one of the nicest men I've met in boxing, and that's I say that quite a lot to some people, but it, it, it's true. Um, congratulations again on the win. You know I'm a biased jock, so when I see another jock doing well, I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> but Nathaniel, I know you've got a young family there, and I do appreciate your time. I know you're busy with other stuff as well, so thank you so much for doing Spyfield TV, and I'll catch you in the next one, mate. Thanks for your time, mate. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Cheers, Nathaniel. Cheers, mate. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 